606 here on the great WRKO AM 680 and now on 93.7 HD2. Good morning, Boston. Welcome to the Cooner Report. Jeff Cooner, Boston's Bulldozer, 617-266-6868. You can text us at 680-680. I got to tell you, my friends, there's no question about it. The more anger Mini-Me feels, the more the Democratic regime up on Beacon Hill and in the governor's office feels from people like you and from the people of Massachusetts. They're getting desperate. Uh, This is incredible. I mean, they are even in liberal Massachusetts. They are now finding to their shock and horror that the people are saying no mass to sheltering and housing another thousand unaccompanied minors pouring in from Central America over the border that Obama has now asked Massachusetts to take in and Minnie has gracefully uh, so gracefully uh, said yes and to his shock I mean you can tell he's stunned he thought the people of Massachusetts were just going to lay down He's hearing it now from many Democrats on Beacon Hill. He's hearing it from Republicans. He's hearing it from independents. He's hearing it from voters. He's hearing it from people on the street. There's no question about it. The people of Massachusetts don't want any more illegals flooding their state. And so here is now the absolute latest. Now he's... This is incredible. Uh, On the one hand, he's got some of his top people, whether it be HHS Secretary Polanowitz, even Attorney General uh, Martha, a.k.a. Marsha Coakley, all of them now saying, well, we don't know if this thing is actually going to happen. Everybody's getting all upset, and we don't know if this thing is actually going to happen, and it's actually going to take place. It's just, the governor is just considering this. He's mulling it over. So on the one hand, you have half the regime now basically trying to backpedal in the face of this popular fury. And on the other hand, you have Mini-Me arrogantly, condescendingly, implying that anybody who disagrees with him is a racist. So here is now the absolute latest developments, my friend. The selectmen in Bourne, where, uh, out in Cape Cod, where they're now looking to house some of these thousand so-called unaccompanied minors, uh, they have now said, yet, they have said no. They do not want them in Cape Cod. They do not want them in Bourne. The mayor of Chicopee and the the government of Chicopee have said, we don't want them on our air reserve base. We don't have enough room at our own air reserve base. And so everywhere they're looking to shelter them, they're saying no. And so yesterday, many me was so angry, Diablo Patrick was so angry, he said, you know, we spoke to people at Bourne, we were trying to explain to them, it's temporary, they're not going to be sent to schools, they're not going to be sent to your neighborhoods, we're not going to be sending them out into your community, and they're going to be gone after 30, 35, maybe 40 days, so and then they're going to be de- they're going to be sent either to other parts of the country or maybe even deported back home. So I don't understand what the problem here is. I just I don't understand. And then he went on to say that there were comments. I'm reading now. This is from Fox 25. There were comments about things like we don't want these people in our neighborhoods. We moved to the Cape in order to be away from people like this. Things that are very coarse and I think unhelpful and frankly don't deal with the realities of the situation. In fact, here is Mini-Me in his own words, roll it, 
Britain. I think uh, he was left with the impression that folks weren't all that interested in uh, in the facts. Um, there were comments about things like, you know, we don't want these people in our neighborhood. We moved to the Cape in order to be away from people like uh, like this and things that are very coarse and I think unhelpful and frankly don't deal with, uh, uh, with the realities of the situation. This guy's unbelievable. This guy's unbelievable. And as I was telling Cooksey yesterday... Either this guy, no, really, either he's a complete idiot, where like the elevator does not go to the top, and he doesn't understand what's going on around him, or frankly, he's a pathological compulsive liar. Take your pick. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know what's worse. I honestly think he's a liar. Okay, mini me, if you're listening to this, I'm telling you to your face, you're lying. First of all. Let's get the racism stuff out of the way, okay? Because you know as well as anybody, nobody in the Cape is... The people that you met, that your people met yesterday in Bourne, none of them were racist. The mayor of Chicopee is not racist. The mayor of Lynn is not racist. My God, all this woman does is care about minority kids and especially the surging Guatemalan community in, her, in Lynn. So please, stop it with that, okay? It's getting old, really. When they say they got away from people like that, you know what they mean? Crime, congestion, criminals. That's what they mean. Because now it's come out at a Pew Research poll. Guess what? Pew Research actually did a statistical analysis of the border. In 2013... Guess what the percentage of the so-called children coming in were teenagers. 91%. This current wave of the 60,000 that have already come over, projected to be 90,000 by the end of this year, guess how many of them are, quote, children? Barely 16. 84% are teenagers. Almost 90% are teenagers. So this idea that somehow we're housing four, five, six-year-old poor children who just need help, little Guatemalan versions of Ashton or Noah, Cooksey's little boy or whatever, and they just need some, they need some compassion. It's hogwash. It's BS. Nearly 90% are not, quote, children. They're teenagers. 15, 16, 17, many of them, and there's numerous reports, Dallas Morning News has another expose, many of them, 19, 20, 21, 22, 24, saying they're 17. Many of them tied to gangs, tied to the drug cartels, tied to MS-13. So when they say we went to the Cape to escape this, what, no one's talking race, mini-me. Come on now. Come on, mini-me. Come on. Even you know that's hokum. Even you know that's BS. Even you know that's bull. They mean crime, disease, congestion, criminals, gangbangers. That's why they, they try to get away from stuff like that, but you keep dumping it in people's neighborhoods. Now, let's get to the heart of the matter. There is a devastating piece in today's Boston Herald, and I want to give a big hat tip to Bob McGovern and Joel Battenfeld. Battenfeld is a very nice column, but Bob McGovern, I think, just hits this baby out of the park. He actually interviewed immigration experts, immigration lawyers, who actually deal with the immigration system. It's all come out. Our immigration courts are so backlogged, according now to this piece in the Boston Herald, that legal experts are saying that most of these cases are going to be backed up to 2017. They're going to be backed up for another three years before they can even get a proper hearing. 
So when he says, we're just going to house them temporarily, we're just going to house them 30 days, 40 days, and then we're going to be deporting, you know, we're going to send them to, who knows, maybe family members or relatives in Chicago or Los Angeles or Seattle or maybe even back to Honduras or Nicaragua or Guatemala or El Salvador. He's lying. And he knows that he's lying. Because most of them won't even get to, uh, get their, to their case until three years from now. And here is the kicker. Here's the absolute kicker. Just to show you how we're being lied to. Okay? So, not only are, are they going to have to get their case, uh, 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 get a hearing in three years, not only are they only going to get up for some kind of uh, a, a trial or, or a procedure three years from now. We've just found out through a House Judiciary Committee report, through a Congressional Committee report, check this out. They've already approved two-thirds of these so-called unaccompanied minors for permanent residency status. They've already been granted, two-thirds of them have already been granted political asylum. What does that mean? That means they're going to come, then there many of them, jobs, they can get EBT cards, they're eligible for Section 8 housing. They're eligible for food stamps. They're eligible for in-state tuition. They can go to elementary or, 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 or public school, let's say in Lynn, ninth grade, free of charge. On our dime. So when he says, oh, they're going to be sent off to other parts, they're not going to be sent to other parts of the country. They're not going to be sent into our cities and towns. He's lying. And he knows that he's lying. And then finally, and then I'm going to open it up to the phone lines. Yesterday, when you li- forget the reality, because we know he's lying, but just his rhetoric, if you listen to his rhetoric, to what he's saying, what is he saying? We're going to hold him temporarily. 30 to 45 days, four months tops, tops four months, I'm telling you, not a day past four months. And then we're going to send them out. We're going to fly them out. We're going to deport them. Either we deport them back to Central America or maybe to other parts of the country. Correct me if I'm wrong. He sounds like Jeff Cooner. In his rhetoric. This is what I find incredible. He sounds like some Tea Party conservative. That's what I'm saying. That's what we've been saying. Send them back. All I'm saying is, get rid of the middleman. Why do we have to temporarily house them? By, he said, his own words, they're not going to be sent into our schools. They're not going to be sent into our neighborhoods. They're not going to be sent into our communities. They're not going to be getting access to Massachusetts health care. That's what he said. His words, not mine. Well, I thought all these pro-amnesty people were saying education is a right. Amnesty is a right. Food stamps is a right. EBT and welfare is a right. He's saying, meaning me is saying, no, 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 no. It's all temporary and then they're all going to be out of state. Either in the country or out of the country. We're going to send them back. So, meaning me, I don't understand something. Why don't we just cut out the mini man, the middleman, us, and just send them back right away the moment they come across the border? Because you're saying, by your words, I know you're lying, but by your own words, you're saying they don't have a right to an education in the state. They don't have a right to go to our schools. They don't have a right to enter our neighborhoods and into our communities. That's what I've been saying. That's what we've been saying. So why is it When I say it, when we say it, those community activists in Lynn, like yesterday, who held that bogus rally, attacking, or on Tuesday, forgive me, attacking Mayor Judy Kennedy, how come then it's save the kids, deport the racists? But when Deval Patrick says, no, we don't want to educate them, no, we don't want them in our neighborhoods, 
No, we don't want them in our communities. We can't afford it. It's all just temporary. How come you don't attack him as a racist? Because he's making exactly my argument. When he says it, he's being moderate and sensible. And he's just doing what's best for the state. But when Jeff Cooner says it, all of a sudden, it's racist. It's hateful. It's divisive. It's deport the racists. My friends, let me tell you what's happening. It's classic bait and switch. We can't afford it. We don't want them. Lynn doesn't want them. Chelsea doesn't want them. Salem doesn't want them. Lawrence doesn't want them. Peabody doesn't want them. Boston doesn't want them. Nobody wants them. Nobody. Democrats are telling them, we don't want them. We can't afford it. And so now Minnie is trying to pull the wool over our eyes and say, oh, it's all so temporary. It's going to be just on two bases. You won't even see them. And then through the back door, they're going to release him into our communities. And by then, he's gone. Gone as gone can be, leaving the governor's office. He's a liar, my friends. And that's why this Saturday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., let us deliver a decisive body blow to this corrupt, teetering regime. Because they're start, they're afraid. Already now, they keep saying, it. well, we don't know if this is actually going to happen because they fear the public backlash. Check out Joe Battenfeld's column today. They were doing an interview with Democratic candidate Steve Grossman right there at South Station. Grossman was defending Duvall's decision on these 1,000 illegal immigrants. Voters overhearing it couldn't help themselves, but they literally interrupted the interview to give Grossman a piece of their mind, saying, we can't take care of our own people. You want to bring in another thousand? On this issue, they're wrong, and they know it. The people are against them. At the steps of the State House, join me for the Stop the Invasion rally. My friends, we can stop them and break them now, but we need to speak with one loud, clear voice. No mas. No more. Send them home, mini-me. 617-266-6868 is the number. 624 on the great WRKO. Mini-me now says that things being said about these illegal immigrants are coarse. People aren't interested in the facts. Why is he so arrogant and dismissing the obvious anger, the powerful, palpable, popular anger in this state against dumping more illegals. I want to hear from you. Has Mini-Me lost touch? 617-266-6868. All of your calls. Next. 628 here on the great WRKO. Jeff Cooner, Boston Bulldozer. Leroy, you're up next. Thanks for holding. Welcome. Yeah, good morning, Jeff. Hi, Leroy. Just wanted to say Mark Fisher's looking more uh, and more like my choice for the governor. Uh, where's Charlie Faker? I haven't heard from Charlie Faker this week on this of you. I'll tell you right now, Leroy. My understanding is this. We've asked Mark Fisher to show up at our rally. He is apparently, he said yes, right, Brittany? So Mark Fisher will be speaking. We have made the same offer to Charlie Baker. So far, no response. So we've asked all of the major candidates to speak. None of them want to speak at our rally against the illegal invasion and against DeVault Minimi's plan, except for Mark Fisher. Now, I'm going to be very honest with you. I now know, I'm telling you, I've been talking to several political heavy hitters, people close to the Republican Party. They think if Baker continues to blow this, he may actually lose the primary. It, it, he thinks he's got this thing locked up and in the bag. And he's already, he thinks he's in general election mode. He better be careful. Because if Mark Fisher plays his cards right and he rides this issue, he could knock Charlie Baker off in the primary. 
That's how combustible the situation is right now. That's how palpable and real the anger is right now. So I'm just, <clears throat> Charlie, if you're listening, you're digging yourself a hole more and more every day. And now it's getting so bad. Here, look. Okay, right in front of me. My Fox Boston. Okay, Fox 25. Looking at a, at a, at a, at a wire story. Here's what Martha Coakley said. Notice how she's starting to back off. Look, watch. Okay, here's what Coakley said. About, you know, she says she supports the governor. But check this out. Look at this. There's been no commitments made. See how they're hedging their bets now? He's looking at what the options are. He said it's short term, meaning mini me, the Volpatrick. It's going to be paid for by the federal government. So in other words, they're not saying, look, it's going to be 30 days, 45 days. The feds pick up the tab. We are the feds, but let that go. The feds pick up the tab, but he still hasn't made a decision yet. Later in the story. Mm, a Republican candidate for Charlie Baker would not talk with Fox 25 on Wednesday. Mm, he won't talk. He sent the same statement he put out last week saying all states should work with the federal government to provide emergency assistance to the unaccompanied minors. Blah, 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 blah. He doesn't know what to do because his Democratic advisors told him, Charlie, you got to be moderate, Charlie. You got to be Democrat like Charlie. And so he then made a decision that now is going against 80% of the people of Massachusetts. And now he's caught in no man's land. Mark, if you're listening, when your opponent is down like that, you finish him. 617-266-6868 is the number. 631 on the great WRKO. My friends, I got so much more. You're not going to believe what the pro-amnesty crowd is now saying, don't touch that dial. I think uh, he was left with the impression that folks weren't all that interested in, uh, in the facts. Um, there were comments about things like, you know, we don't want these people in our neighborhood. We moved to the Cape in order to be away from people like, uh, like this and things that are very coarse and I think unhelpful and frankly don't deal with, uh, uh, with the realities of the situation. 639 here on the great WRKO. Jeff Cooner, Boston's Bulldozer, 617-266-6868 is the number. So, mini-me, Diablo Patrick, is now saying, no, it's all a big misunderstanding. It's all temporary. This is, this, 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 this. What, what are you guys worried about? This is, why, why don't you want him in your, in your, uh, 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 why don't you want him in Bourne? Why are you born officials uh, on the Cape so upset? Why are you guys in Chicopee so upset? This is it's just, it's a complete misunderstanding. It's going to be temporary, 30 days, 40 days, ba barely a month. And then they're just going to start being processed, and they're going to be gone within four months. It's all very temporary. Then they're going to be out of state. They may even be sent back. They may even be deported. Wink, wink, wink. He's lying. He's a liar. If no one else has the guts to say it in this state, I'm going to say it, Minnie Me. You're lying. You're lying to the media. You're lying to your own party. He's meeting with lawmakers today. Democrats are up in arms about this. And you're lying to the citizens of the Commonwealth. You know as well as I do, it's not temporary. In fact, many of them have already basically been given asylum. They're just waiting to get their papers. And when they're free, they're going to Lynn. They're going to Chelsea. They're going into our towns and our cities. All over Massachusetts on our dime. And now the cracks are beginning to appear. Because there is so much opposition to this. Many Democrats know, you back the all on this, you could be committing political Harry Carey. So now, Martha, a.k.a. Marsha Coakley, I don't know, I, he hasn't made a commitment yet. He hasn't said we're taking him in yet. Listen to Martha Coakley dance, and oh-ho, is Marsha dancing. 
Roll it, Brittany. There's been no commitments made. No. He's looking at what the options are. He said it's short term. It's going to be paid for. Do by you the believe that? Government. Do you believe it'll be short term? I take the governor at his word and the president at his word. But I think they're being very transparent about it also. Oh, yeah. I think the governor at his word. I think the president at his word. No. The dear leaders never lied. No. About Obamacare. No. About the IRS scandal. About Benghazi. Come on. The guy's the most honest. He's honest Abe. He's the second coming of Abraham Lincoln. It's incredible. He's such an honest man. Notice what's being left out of this entire discussion. And then I want to talk to you. Members of Cooner Country, I'm going to open up to the phone lines. No one's talking about the nine plane loads. Just to refresh everyone's memory. First they said it was two plane loads. That the federal government apparently had flown in, either to um, uh, most of uh, at uh, to, uh, in Bedford, or they flew them to Logan Airport. Then it went to three. Then it went to four. Then we find out it went to six. Now we find out there were actually nine plane loads full of so-called unaccompanied minors, illegal immigrants, and they were just dumped. And they were dumped in Massachusetts. Some of them were sent up north to New Hampshire. And the whole time, Minnie Me says, I swear, I, I, I never knew. I, the feds didn't tell me. Nobody, I, I don't know. I, 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 this is the first I hear about it. It's like the dear leader. I, I just, I read it in the Herald. I, I, I'm, I read it in the Globe. I, no, no. Nine, the Fed sent in nine plane loads. I, I wasn't told. I, I, nothing, nobody said anything to me. I'm meaning me. Nobody said nothing to me. So apparently, in the dark of night, the Feds dumped nine plane loads of illegal immigrants. We're talking thousands. Now you want to throw in another thousand? After not being transparent about the first nine plane loads? Where are they? What communities have they been going to? I'll tell you what the mayor of Lynn's been saying. She's been getting a massive influx from one province in Guatemala alone. They don't even speak Spanish in that province. They speak some Indian dialect. They got to get uh, 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 language experts, translators, to even to translate from Indian to Spanish, then from Spanish to English. This state already has, at a minimum, a hundred thousand illegal immigrants within its borders. At a minimum, and it's it's costing us. Two billion dollars a year. We want to bring in more? More diseases? More gangbangers? 90% of them teenagers? By the way, now we're finding out how many of them are being raped by these human smugglers, by these coyotes, or brutally beaten. You now have psychiatrists. Don't take my word for it. The Herald's been brilliant on this. Psychiatrists are now saying, you don't understand, the trauma that these teenagers are now enduring, the PTSD, the mental issues, the depression, uh, this is, we're going to have to be paying for this for, gener- for, for decades to come. Never mind the possible violence. And we're just going to keep bringing this in? Let me ask all of you this question. Mini me says it's temporary. Do you believe him? And do you think we can reverse this decision? 617-266-6868. Natalie, you're up next. Thanks for holding. Welcome. You know, Ann Coulter once said that if you can't change the minds of the voters, you just change the voters. And he's importing all of these um, people of questionable age, like right now, they're children. Tomorrow, we have no documents on them. They'll be 19, 20 year olds. They'll all have the right to vote. So they're going to be distributing them to all these crucial places where Democrats are in trouble to make the difference, to throw elections. Is this far fetched? I don't think so. And what really galls me is that they're tightening all the 
putting the tightening, the putting the squeeze on legal gun owners again with bigger enhanced background checks and all that. We have a constitutional right to keep and bear arms, but we are subjected to all these waiting times and all this background checks. Yet there's n- people become outraged if you suggest having any kind of ID for voting or background checks on these people. How do we know who they are? They're going to be voting in the next election. Uh, Natalie, look, uh, you nailed it. What he's, I'll tell you what he's doing. Obama's doing this nationally. Minimi is doing it here on a state level. They are selecting. They're deliberately selecting and creating a new electorate by importing an underclass. Let me repeat that. They are selecting a new electorate. They're selecting their new voters by importing a huge underclass. That's what this is all about. And they're going to place them strategically all across the state to guarantee the democratic control of this state, the liberal domination for generations and decades to come. That's what this is, on your back and on your money. 617-266-6868, that's what's going on here. So they just got to get them through the gates. It's like Trojan horse. Just get them through. By hook or by crook. It's temporary. 30 days. The feds are going to pick up the tab. They won't go in anybody's neighborhoods or schools. These are just, they're two bases. You won't even see them. They won't even go on the beach on Cape Cod, okay? Just, just let them in. I need them in. Just get them in. Somehow. Somehow, some way. I'm mini me. Russell, you're up next. Thanks for holding. Welcome. Morning, Jeff. How are you today? I'm phenomenal. How are you? Great. I heard a caller say Charlie Faker this morning. That's my favorite. I'm going to use that when I vote for Marsha Coakley. I'm going to say that. <laughs> hey, um, the the key to this, and, and I think the rally on Saturday, is where are the nine plane loads? Somebody has got to find out and expose the nine plane loads of people. That's going to be demonstrative of the fact that these people that, are, that he's talking about bringing here aren't going anywhere. Nobody's going anywhere. They're here to stay. Where are the nine? I, I, Russell, I'd love to know that. Uh, that's the. I mean, I know where they are the, uh, because I, we're getting reports. Look, the mayor of Chelsea just said just a couple of weeks ago we got more people coming into our schools from Guatemala, from uh, Honduras, from El Salvador, straight from those countries. So the plane loads are coming in, and they're being sent distributed into our communities. But I'd love to have a breakdown. Oh, what I love. And I will bet you dollars to donuts. They ain't going to the Berkshires. Mm, They're not going where Minnie-Me lives. They're not going to Milton. I guarantee you that. They're not in Brookline, which is like five minutes from where I broadcast from. Oh, no, no, no. No, sir. Not in Lincoln. No, no. Your neighborhoods, your communities. Betty, you're up next. Thanks for holding. Welcome. Oh, good morning, Jeff. Um, You are a historian. Yes. So you know that the Spanish and the Portuguese conquistadors reached Mexico, Central and South America, about 100 years before any Englishman ever set foot in Jamestown and Plymouth. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. Those countries have enormous reserves of natural wealth. They've had more than 500 years and countless opportunities to get it right, and they still haven't done it. Instead, generation after generation have indulged themselves in dictators and tyrants. They've wallowed in lawlessness and revolution, and they have condemned their own people to lives of misery, poverty, ignorance, and disease. And now... Our ruling class and theirs want the American taxpayers to pay the price for half a millennium of sloth, corruption, and tyranny of foreigners? Isn't it bad enough that we're picking up the tab for the sloth, corruption, and tyranny of our own ruling class? I am furious. Betty, wow. I couldn't have said that better myself. Betty, please call back again. 617-266-6868. 650 on the great RKO. More with your calls next. 656 here on the great WRKO. 617-266-6868. Jim, you're up next. Thanks for holding. Go ahead, Jim. Good 
Good morning, Jeff. Hey, Jim. Don't forget, when you're dealing with a big, a great leader, the hand is quicker than the eye. Don't forget that at the moment, you've got a deadlock in Washington on the passage of an immigration bill. Now comes 30 or 40 days, whatever it is, when the, these people are all supposed to be sent home. And the deal leader then says to everybody, gee, I don't have any money to pay the airfare to send them home. The airlines are not going to take them home for free. They, and now you're going to end up with these people stuck here as long as the fight over the immigration bill continues. And it becomes a weapon in his hands to, to try to force the congressman to vote in favor of the Senate bill, which is, is no control at all. Uh, Jim, I think you're right. He's using them as political leverage. He's using them as ransom to try to guilt trip the Republicans into signing comprehensive immigration reform. And as I pointed out, that Senate passed bill that Obama wants to sign, it already will give, it will give, if passed, 35 million green cards to illegal aliens. That's enough. I kid you, that will, that's enough for every family. And guess what? Shazam! What a coincidence! In Honduras, Guatemala, and El Salvador. We're gonna basically take in all of Central America. It's, it's, it's gonna be gone. They're just all gonna move up here. 6172, that's what I say, it's the United States of Mexico. Don't, there's no point in, you want a vacation in Central America? Don't bother, stay here, because Central America is coming to us. Steve, go ahead, my friend. Hi, Jeff, I'm just calling about these illegals. Yes. They're saying they're coming here for the American dream. I've been here all my life, plugging away, living paycheck to paycheck. I'm trying to achieve the American dream, and they're just going to just scale my dream when I'm trying to achieve it. Because our taxes keep going up because we got to pay for these people. I say no, ship them back. I don't care. Thank you for that call, Steve. Look, objectively, okay, just sit back and think about this. Just think about it. We've got homeless veterans. We've got veterans who aren't even able to see a doctor in a VA hospital. We've got hardworking citizens who recently were stripped of their health care because of Obamacare. We've got children, if you, and you want to be uh, racial about it, because it seems that all the, the left can talk about is race. We have poor African-American black children, poor Latino Hispanic children, who can't even go to school safely because of the gang violence in our own streets, who, have, who are in, in crumbling inner city schools. We have children who go hungry at night. And all of a sudden now, we have money for all of these illegals, but we don't have money for vets who basically sacrificed everything for our country. We don't have money for our own children. We don't have money for poor, Amer uh, poor African Americans, poor Latinos, poor whites. It's disgusting. On every level, it's disgusting. There's an old saying, charity begins at home. It's time we took care of our own in our American home. I'm sorry to the rest of the world. We have enough of our own problems. Take care of your own problems. We're no longer the dumping ground for every third world country. 617-266-6868 is the number. 7 o'clock on the great WRKO. Let's take it to Angela in the newsroom. News at the top and bottom. Talk in between. Yes, it is. Thank me very much. Go right ahead, my friend. This is AM680 WRKO, Boston. Seven oh five here on the Great WRKO and now on ninety three point seven HD two. Welcome back, hour two of the Cooner Report. Jeff Cooner, Boston's bulldozer, cleaning up the liberal bull. And my friends, we're getting the mother load right now. Sensing now an intense public backlash. Knowing now that even liberals in Massachusetts are absolutely disgusted by mini-me Diablo Patrick's decision 
to potentially house and shelter another 1,000 illegal immigrants from Central America. He is now going on the offensive. The town of Bourne city officials said they don't want them housed up on Cape Cod at Camp Edwards. There's no more space. They don't want them in their community. Many of them are gangbangers. Many of them have diseases. Many of them may even have criminal records. They don't want them in their neighborhood, and I don't blame them. The mayor of Chicopee has said, we don't want them on our reserve Air Force base. The mayor of Lynn has said they're breaking. They are at the breaking point. Chelsea, the illegal immigrants, I swear to you, in Chelsea, the illegals in Chelsea are saying no mas. That the, Chelsea is now strained to the breaking point. So now, facing this intense backlash, mini me starts to change tack. Now, it's no longer about the children. For a while, it was citing Jesus and Scripture and his conscience and his faith. And it was, was a stranger walks among us and the Jews in Israel. And I mean, he went deep biblical. He went way into the Old Testament. That didn't seem to work. That just didn't seem to work. So now, mm, you oppose me on this, mm, wink, wink, you're a racist. And on the, on the other hand, you know, I think all of you just don't understand the facts. You just seem to be all, you peasants are just so misinformed. You, you, my God, you, you bitter clingers out there. You just, all of you, you just seem to be hanging on to your guns and to your Bibles and to your religion and to your faith, and you don't seem to understand the facts. Let me enlighten you. It's just temporary. It's 30 days, 45 days. The, the feds are picking up the tab. It won't cost you a dime. They're not going to be in your schools. They're not going to be in your neighborhoods. The, you know what it is? It's a vacation. They're going to come, we're going to put them up in a nice facility, 30 days, they're gone. They're gone. Hasta la vista, baby. Roll it, Brittany. I think uh, he was left with the impression that folks weren't all that interested in uh, in the facts. Um, there were comments about things like, you know, we don't want these people in our neighborhood. We moved to the Cape in order to be away from people like uh, like this and things that are very coarse and I think unhelpful and frankly don't deal with, uh, uh, with the realities of the situation. You take them in. I mean, if, if you want them in your neighborhood, if you... Hey, there's 77 acres right there on your estate. As Howie likes to put it, bucolic, beautiful, pristine. You can grow crops, they can pitch up tents, they can go swimming, they can play on the tennis courts. Your mansion is huge. You can, uh, most of them, you can house them very comfortably, mini me. What's the problem? I know. You know how I know they know they're in trouble? When I saw that phony baloney, Boston Globe poll yesterday, which, I mean, to me, you want to talk about an embarrassment to that paper. They had to contort that poll. Oh, you want to talk about turning a poll into a pretzel. They're, they're looking at these numbers and they're like, this is, this is, I thought this was liberal Massachusetts. I thought this was Moonbatville. And, but the Moonbats, they're not backing the dear leader. They're not backing me on this. And so they had to construct their poll. By basically asking the residents of Massachusetts, the citizens of Massachusetts, well, would, do you agree with Deval Patrick's plan to temporarily, for only 30 days, in which the tab is going to be picked up completely by the federal government? It won't cost you a nickel, a shekel, a ruble. And then just 30 days, and then they're gone. Do you support the plan? Even on that most manipulated, contorted question. Split 50-50. 50 said yes, 43 said strongly opposed, and 7 basically said undecided. Basically, it was split. And the globe was stunned. 
I know it's a bogus poll. I know it's running 8, 9, 10 to 1, and I'll tell you how I know. Here at Entercom, most of the people that work, we have a several sister stations, I'm telling you, most of them are liberals, and I mean uber liberals. They're the ones with the Elizabeth Warren bumper stickers and the Obama bump, bumper stickers, okay? There's one guy in particular, nice guy, uh, cooks and I always shoot the breeze with him. He's a producer on our sister station, uh, EI. Okay, he does the sports, uh, one of the sports shows. He loves the dear leader. He voted for the dear leader. He loves Granny Warren. He loves Minnie Me. He drives, I swear to you, you want to talk about a cliche? He drives a Prius. Okay? He's a Prius driving ultra liberal with Elizabeth Warren bumper sticker. I said, hey, what do you think of the Volpatrick's plan? I hate it. Why? I'm just completely opposed to it. But well, why? We can't take care of our own. What are we doing taking all these people? And if they come into my community, we said to me, my property values are going to drop like a stone. He goes, this, we can't afford it. He goes, this is going to bankrupt us. This is insane. He goes, honestly, I don't know what this guy's thinking. I said, really? He goes, and I'll tell you something else. Not only do I oppose it, all my liberal friends oppose it. In fact, they don't just oppose it. They think he's crazy. In fact, you really want to know the truth, Jeff? They're all listening to you now. They're saying, whoa, at least somebody's speaking the truth. Yep, makes perfect sense to me. It's not just one guy. It's one liberal after another, after another, after another. We work right nearby the WGBH building. Okay? You want to talk about moon bats. I work next to the moon bats. I see them at lunch every day in the cafeteria. The moon bats are spitting on mini me. The moon bats are like, what's, what's he thinking? We just, we can't afford it. We just can't. Not in my neighborhood, not in my community. So I know that's a bogus poll. I know. So he's going to try to play the race card. He can't. He just, he can't. So now, now, just get him in. Now he's got to get him in. So now, you don't know the facts. Okay, what are the facts? It's temporary. What, tell me, what has ever been temporary with you liberals? What? The tolls on the Tobin Bridge? That was temporary 25 years ago. How about the state income tax? Remember that one? That was supposed to be temporary. I, I could just go, what has ever, ever been temporary with you liberals? The nine plane loads, that was temporary. Mm, there they are. Lie upon lie upon lie upon lie. Who do you think is going to school and educate them? We will. The feds aren't picking up the tab. We are. When they go on EBT cards, who do you think pays for that? We are. When they go into our hospitals, when they register for the health care connector, who do you think picks up the tab? We do. When they go into our communities and rape, murder, and rob, it's come out now from Texas, the Border Patrol has admitted 100,000 gang members are illegal immigrants who've come into Texas just over the last four years. A hundred thousand of them, hardcore gang members. From illegals alone, just in Texas, in four years. Official government statistics. Five thousand murders, to, forgive me, five thousand rapes, two thousand murders. We need our women raped? We need to have people shedding blood and being killed on our streets. That's what we need. And then you stand there, you arrogant SOB, and you lecture us, those poor people at Bourne who are desperately trying to tell you we're at the breaking point. We can't, they cannot put people in Camp Edwards. There's no room. The people in Chicopee are saying, look, you don't understand something. We just, we can't afford it. We got too many children in our schools already, in our classrooms already. Our classrooms are already overflowing. What are you talking to us about? Huh. 
how many veterans I see homeless? Go to Boylston Street. Walk around Boston. How many veterans have died waiting for health care in our VA system? How many children are going hungry at night in this country? How many Americans can't find a job? How many Americans are working part-time looking to get a job? A full-time job? It's incredible. And I have to say this. I have to say this. When State Representative Jim Maselli, a Democrat who's livid about this issue, okay, he was on Howie's show on Friday, personally asked, not for a million, not for a hundred thousand, not even for fifty thousand, he asked for twenty five thousand dollars for special needs kids in his own district to build them a center, to build them a facility, a small camp. We're talking about severe special needs kids. Many me came in there, struck it out. We don't have the money. We don't have the money. He vetoed it. We don't have the money. You don't have 25000 for severe special needs kids, the weakest of the weak. When we ask for more money, local aid to cities and towns, Minimi has slashed $150 million. He says, there's no money. So, there's no money for our local schools. There's no money for our local firefighters. There's no money for our local roads. There's no money for local homeless shelters. But suddenly, suddenly, when it comes to importing an underclass, to importing future Democratic voters, that's what they are. They're not undocumented immigrants, quote-unquote. They're undocumented Democrats. They just want to bring him here to give him documentation so they can actually become full-fledged Democrats. Suddenly, when it comes to importing voters on our back and our dime, <gasps> there's money everywhere. Then it's a gusher full of money. It's unlimited money. Money for planes, money for buses, money for military bases, for schools, for food, resorts in Texas, hotel resorts. Suddenly there's 50. They killed the project because of outrage. But they were going to spend $50 million a year for a hotel and resort. Then there's jacuzzi, spas, tennis courts, racquetball courts, football fields, soccer fields. You name it, they got the cash for it. Enough is enough. This is becoming a third world banana republic. They're stealing from us. They're shafting us. They're screwing us. Forgive my language, but I have to say it. And then they lecture us. And I got to make one last, last, last point. And I'm speaking now directly to you, Minnie Me. Because I know you and your aides listen to this show. And I know you've put a target on my back. And I know that your people have been sending me death threats over the last week because you're petrified of this rally on Saturday. I know that. You don't scare me. You are, sir, the governor of this state, of this commonwealth. You are the elected leader of this commonwealth. That means you are supposed to represent all of us. And in particular, especially... The hard-working taxpayers of this state, the working middle-class people of this state who break their back every day, raise their families and go to work, that pay for all the welfare social services you love to dole out. They pay, by the way, for your salary. You know that $9 million you're renovating yourself, that gold-plated toilet you want to sit your rear end on? We pay for that, many me. You won't even listen to us. 
you won't even sit down and say, hmm, why are they so angry? Why have they had it up to here? Why are they so opposed? You won't even consider why so many people in this state are against this? Are you that arrogant? Are you that full of pride and hubris? Are you that disconnected? Are you that drunk with power? Or honestly, I'm being very candid with you. I'm not saying this to insult you. I'm really being, God is my witness. Or are you such a left-wing fanatic? Because that's what a fanatic is. He will not listen to any other point of view, no matter how overwhelming the truth and the reality is. Are you that much of a fanatic? That you can't see your own state opposes you 80 to 20 on this issue? We are the most generous people on earth. We have taken in immigrants from every corner of the world going back hundreds of years. This has been the greatest land of opportunity in the history of the world. Don't you dare lecture us about being welcoming or being racist or being tolerant because there's nobody tolerant and nobody more generous than the average American. And we are now telling you loud and clear we can't afford it we don't want it and we are a nation built on the rule of law we are a nation of legal immigrants we are not a nation of criminals and I don't know how much clearer I can make it to you to get it through your thick obtuse fanatical left wing socialist skull we don't want them here We don't want them in Cape Cod. We don't want them in Chicopee. We don't want them in Lynn. We don't want them in Foxborough. We don't want them in Boston. We don't want them anywhere. Send them back to where they belong, with their parents' home in Central America. 617-266-6868 is the number. 723 on the great WRKO. All of your calls next. 727 here on the great WRKO. My friends, it's time we take our stand. Speak with one loud, powerful voice. This Saturday, two days from today, July 26th, starting at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., a major Stop the Invasion rally. I will be the keynote speaker. We're spearheading it here on the Kuna Report at the steps of the State House. Shauna O'Connell will be speaking. Leah Cole will be speaking. The mayor of Lynn, Judy Kennedy, is scheduled to speak. Mark Fisher has agreed to speak. We've also given an invitation out to Charlie Baker's people. So far, no response. But my friends, it's time we speak with one loud, clear voice. Send them home. Linda, you're up next. Thanks for holding. Welcome. Jeff, good morning, and thank you so much for taking my call. My pleasure. I'd like to make a couple of points. Point number one is uh, U.S. Representative Stephen Lynch just came back from a fact-finding tour of Central America. He, By the way, he is a Democrat I have a lot of respect for. He said that these kids are not fleeing any type of violence because a lot in a lot of these countries, violence is way, way down, much lower than what it is in this country. They're fleeing poverty. So my question is, number one, if the coyotes that are transporting these kids from Central America through Mexico into our country are getting paid anywhere from $5,000 to $9,000 per child. Where are these families coming up with this money? Oh my God, $9,000 in Guatemala for a family, I'm guessing, goes a long, long way to pay for food down there. And secondly, we give billions and billions of dollars, we meaning the United States government, gives billions of dollars to every single country in this on the planet, where are the, where's the money going besides in the pockets of all of these dictators? Well, that's Linda. That's the problem. Put a, let's put a stop to the foreign aid. I'm with you. And, yeah, I mean it's ridiculous. They're they're stealing it. M- much of our foreign aid money is being stolen. 
Now, you look, you want to stop this? That's why I know they're not serious. That's why I know that their leader is lying, and mini is lying. I will solve this thing for you, literally. I got 30 seconds before the break. I want to solve it for you in 30 seconds. You pick up the phone. You're the president. You call the president of Mexico, and you go, Pablo, NAFTA, those trade agreements that we have with you, I'm going to rescind them on the spot unless you crack down on the coyotes and the drug cartels. You seal your southern border. I don't want to see one Central American illegal immigrant ever come close to the Rio Grande or else NAFTA is finished and all those jobs that you've been stealing from Americans. And oh uh, yeah, and by the way, yes, and by the way, I want give me back Andrew Tamarisi. I want my Marine back in twenty four hours. Okay? And I with a nice meal in him, uh, uh you know, a nice uniform, I want him looking phenomenal when I see him in twenty four hours. Okay? Give me back my Marine. Second, I call up the presidents of El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras. You see all that foreign aid money that you guys use to build your villas and your palaces and your cocaine parties? Uh, I'm going to cut that tap off completely. You're going to get zero. Unless you tell everybody in Central America, nobody leaves for the gringo anymore. You crack down on the drug cartels and you make it known nobody who goes up there is going to be given amnesty because no one's getting amnesty. And if you don't get the word out and crack down on your own people and crack down on your own drug cartels, not a cent, not a peso in foreign aid. In 24 hours, the border is secure. 731 on the great WRKO. More with your calls next. 739 here on the great WRKO. Jeff Cooner, Boston's bulldozer. My friends, it's not just us. It's not just New Hampshire with those secret plane loads. Now there are media reports that they're dumping these illegal immigrants in Maine. In Maine. They're, um, they're going to go all across New England. I mean, I know they're going across the country, but just in our corner of the world here. There, <laughs> now it's Maine. I mean, and trust me, next it's going to be Vermont. There, they're they're gonna they're it's just like saturation, it's like carpet bombing. They're just they're gonna dump them everywhere. And so, last weekend, the American people began to finally rise up. And in state after state, town after town, they did what we're going to be doing this Saturday. They began to hold major rallies. And if you want to see just how anti-American, how utterly disrespectful and contempt, the contempt that they have for this country and our sovereignty and our traditions, listen to this. As these rallies were taking place, Everywhere the chant was, USA, USA. And so in, uh, this, in, in particular, there was a major rally out in California. And uh, it was in Murrieta County. And so out in Murrieta in California, a huge crowd showed up, and they were chanting, USA, USA, USA. Well, uh, this was extremely offensive to the president and CEO of La Raza, the race, which is basically uh, a pro-Hispanic, pro-amnesty, radical left-wing advocacy group, which has been spearheading this amnesty policy in the Senate, in Congress, and with the dear leader. They're one of Obama's closest allies. And so in her keynote address to the annual conference of La Raza in Los Angeles... La Raza President and CEO Janet Morgua said in her own words, it sickened her, it made her sick to her stomach to hear Americans against illegal immigration chanting USA, USA. And so, singling out the Murrieta demonstrators at her keynote address at La Raza's annual conference in Los Angeles, Murgua, Murgua accused them of having, listen to this, quote, cloaked their hatred in patriotism, unquote. 
by shouting, as she put it, USA, USA, again and again. Here's what she said, quote, It made me angry, she said. In fact, I was outraged. What we saw in Murrieta is not patriotism, she asserted. It is ugly, it's divisive, and yet another low in a debate that I could not get much lower. She said it frankly made me sick to my stomach. It sickened me to hear them say USA, USA. So now patriotism is a form of hatred. So now to love your own country, to love America, now that's divisive. So now it makes you sick to see Americans waving the American flag and saying USA, USA? We want to protect our borders, we want to protect our nation, we want to protect our children, we want to protect our culture. We just don't want anybody to just come in across our border with no documentation. They could be murderers, they could be rapists, who knows what diseases they have. In fact, we know they have many diseases. It's been overwhelmingly documented. So now, to love America is racist. To love America makes her sick. To love America is a form of hate and intolerance. This is from the same woman and the same group that now demands unconditional amnesty for every single illegal alien in this country. They're, they're showing their true colors. They're not even hiding it anymore. The hatred and contempt that they have for America. They hate us so much. These radical left-wingers, they hate America so much. The mention of her name in a chant makes them almost physically ill and repulses them. Hey, Senorita Murgua, if America sickens you so much, go to Mexico. Get lost. If the sight of the flag sickens you so much, get lost. Who's asking you to be here? But look at the self-loathing. Look at the utter hatred that they have for this country and its people. And my question to her is this. When the Mexicans secure their border, because they protect their borders, are they being racist? When the Mexicans wave the Mexican flag at the World Cup and they chant, Viva Mexico, Viva Mexico, does that sicken you when they show their patriotism and their love of Mexico? Or when the Colombians do it? Or when the Argentinians do it? Or when the Brazilians do it? Or when the Germans do it? Or when the Japanese do it? Or when the British do it? Or when the Italians do it? But suddenly, the only country in the world where people can't be proud to be an American, where they can't love their flag, love their homeland, love their culture, love their neighborhoods, love their communities, want to protect and defend their borders, is America. You see, and this gets to the heart of it. This is why the radical left so hates this country and they want to break us through illegal immigration. Because deep down, they believe we're the evil empire. Deep down, they believe there's something uniquely evil and wicked about the United States. That we were founded upon slavery and upon genocide and upon oppression and upon the uh, uh, the oppression and abuse of women and minorities, and they run down the whole list: racist, sexist, the whole, the whole, the whole kitten caboodle. And so they believe that because we're so responsible for all of the exploitation in the world and all of this so-called hatred and racism and genocide, that we have to be uniquely punished. That we don't have a right to behave as a nation and as a people in defense of our own sovereignty. That's what this is fundamentally about. And this ties into everything else. It's why our president apologizes for us. It's why Common Core is being rammed down our schools. 
It's why our textbooks try to brainwash our children into hating our founding fathers, hating our constitution, hating our history, hating capitalism, hating everything America stands for, hating our Judeo-Christian heritage. It's all part of the leftist assault to destroy America's historic cultural core. This is what George Soros wants. This is what Obama wants. This is what Minimi wants. This is what La Raza wants. And my friends, it's time we stood up and said, enough is enough. America, love it or leave it. Jennifer, you're up next. Thanks for holding. Welcome. Thanks for um, all that you do. I just want to let you know that um, Governor Patrick sent the undersecretary to the Born Selectmen's meeting, and um, the selectmen um, listened to him. They were very respectful. Um, he said that um, if um, Born is chosen, that they would be building a fence within Camp Edwards and that there would be a school set up for up to a thousand children. And um, um, he must have said nine or ten times, 35 days, four months. And Representative Randy Hunt was there, and he got up and said, he said the, the greatest sentence of the night. He said, 35 days, why do you need a school? Our kids are off all summer, and they don't go to school. And what what was the response, Jennifer? There really wasn't a response. Um, you know, he he. We all just voiced um, our complaints and our our concerns about the crime, like you said. Um, it's it's absolutely what you're saying. Um, this is not just four months. Um, apparently, we don't own the, gov- the federal government doesn't own the property in Bourne, so they have to set up a contract. But then um, it was also slid in by the undersecretary that it can be um, renewed every four months. So you're right. This is just going to be a revolving door. And I just wanted to um, to thank you for all that you do. Oh, my pleasure. God bless you, Jennifer. Keep up the good fight. Thank you. We can win this. If we stand united and speak out forcefully, we will force Minnie to back down. We can break them, my friends. But we have to be bold, we have to be courageous, and now is the time to take action. 617-266-6868. Dave, you're up next. Thanks for holding. Welcome. All right, good morning, sir. Um, hey, real, real quick, if I may, a comment and a quick question. Sure. Um, I'm a 51-year-old ex-Marine, college educated, just got through 15 years, uh, six-figure job. Now I paint for $15 an hour. I still get up and do it, but the idea that we're going to flood this place with immigrants to make make it more competitive for me to get back on top sickens me. But my question is this, the simplicity of the fix. Why don't we defund maybe one war plane, take, those, take that revenue, secure our borders, and ship every last illegal alien back? Just simplify it right to its core. What is so hard about that? We can't feed and we can't educate the people we have here. We're already in trouble. I just can't imagine anyone with the slightest bit of uh, brain power or common sense welcoming more people into a country that's already shaking it to its core. I can't freaking believe it. I can't believe it's even being considered. It, it frightens me more Dave, than more. So. Dave, look, I, I got, first I want to thank you for your service. That's number thank one. You. But number two, Dave, look, you really, you have to trust me on this, okay? And we're going to do some man of the street interviews. We're, Cooksey, Brittany, and I, we're going to go and talk to some of these radical left-wingers, and you're going to hear it for yourself, straight from the horse's mouth. Yes. We can build the wall. We can deport them. We can stop, the, really, we can stop this in 24 hours. The ruling elites don't want to. They don't want to. So, you see, you're approaching Why? this very Why? rationally, very reasonably, very logically as a red-blooded American. You're saying, look, we got to, you know, it's like painting a house. Okay, you got a problem, let's just, okay, scrape it off, da 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 clean up, okay, then let's start painting. <laughs> no, they, they don't look at it that way. They look at America as something to be tamed, to be changed, to be transformed. You see, remember, 
He gave the game away. Obama did. Several weeks before, in fact, a week before his election in 2008. He Uh said, now we are a few days away from, quote, fundamentally transforming this nation. He's done a poor job, that's for sure. What is what is so bad about America that it needs to be quote fundamentally transformed? Look, it, it can be improved. Nothing is perfect. Uh, we were in an economic crisis then. I understand, but what is so bad? Why what? do we need to be janitors to the earth? Why do we even prioritize our concerns about Central American children? I don't get it. It's so low down the list as far as my priorities. I'm all for helping the weak. And I do it every day. I'm the first one to pull over. I see someone with a flat tire. But for Christ's sakes, we cannot welcome anyone else into this country until we square ourselves away. And, and I'm stunned, and I almost feel stupid that I can't figure out why Dave, any intelligent person would do it. I said it in the last hour, but I want to repeat it. There's an old saying. There's nothing more truer and wiser than this. Charity begins at home. Our American home needs to be taken care of. We have our own countrymen, citizens, fe- women, men, fellow citizens who need help. Let's take care of our own before even thinking about taking care of the rest of the world. So here is what Jeff Kuhner would do. I'm serious. Close off that border completely. Go to every town, every city, deport every single illegal immigrant. Every single, you don't have your papers, gone. That's it, period. No deportation here, no, you're gone. And then put a giant sign to the rest of the world. For one year, closed for renovation. That's it. It's time to begin. I'm tired of nation building in Afghanistan. I'm tired of nation building in Iraq. I'm tired of nation building in Libya. It's time we did nation building here at home. America closed for renovation. Because believe me, my friends, we got enough of our own problems. 617-266-6868. The last thing we need is to become the toilet for all of the people around the world who just want to keep flushing and flushing and flushing. 754 on the great WRKO. More with your calls next. Get the news now. Then talk about it after with Jeff Cooner. You see what I got to put up with? Man of my education. Man of my learning. Every day I have to deal with this. On AM 680 WRKO. Boston.